Hello. Okay, great. Awesome. Thank you, Cam. And I seriously love it that you are on brand. It's awesome. Um, so just a quick bit about Pixel Palace. Um, oh, actually, no. Let me just start with a bit about my talk, first of all. This talk is all about perspective. Um, like Cam just said, um, there's a few people in this room that have worked on $50,000 WordPress sites. I'm guaranteeing there's a, probably a lot that are like, holy moly, that's a lot of money for a WordPress site. So um, just out of interest, who thinks that $50,000 is a lot for a WordPress site? Yeah. And who thinks it's not much? <laughs> yeah. And who says it depends? It depends? Yeah, me. It totally depends, right? Um, and so today I'm going to talk about why it depends and hopefully answer the question, at least from our perspective of a small agency in the space, about what goes into a $50,000 site and why it's really good value in the right circumstances. Um, so, um, yeah, chatting about this topic to lots of people, you get a lot of different opinions on it. Um, there's two parts to it. One, two parts to a high value website, in my opinion. One is the stuff you can see, so design, dev, build, functionality, stuff like that. But the other bit's a little bit more abstract, and it's about value-based pricing. So I'm going to dive into both those things today in the talk. Um, but just to recap a bit about me and Pixel Palace, um, so like Cam said, those who, I don't know if anyone saw my talk last year, but I kind of um, dived right into my life story a bit in terms of humanizing the brand. And um, if you didn't see it, the video is up on WordCamp TV. I'm not going to go into all this again now. Um, but um, yeah, really interesting. I started in web after my glittering music career ended. Um, and I started out building business catalyst sites, actually, in 2007-ish. Um, and I was building sites for about 500 bucks when I started. Um, I had a few contacts from my music industry um, stuff, so I was getting to work on some cool things just from home. I just had my first baby. Um, and at the time, I was like, talking to a friend on my couch when, we'd first, when I first started, and I was like, oh, imagine if I could earn 500 bucks a week from this. This would be, oh my God, amazing. Um, and I think at that time I charged like someone three grand for an e-commerce site, and I thought, I've made it, that was it. This was freaking unreal. Um, so it was about 2011, I found a Pixel Palace after that, and in about 2011 we moved to being WordPress specific. Um, and now 12 years on, we specialize in strategic marketing and custom WordPress in particular. Um, to talk in terms of price, our custom sites range from about the 20 grand mark start point up to $100,000 would be the biggest one we've done. And um, we're a small team. There's uh, seven as of last week. I'm currently scaling the business, um, but for a while there it was only three. Um, now it's been five for a bit and now we're seven. So um, exciting times. So I'm going to talk about some sites today and I am not saying that any of these sites or the sites on our portfolio or these clients paid $50,000. That is not what I'm saying. Um, but I think it's important to show some examples of some functionality and things that we've built that are examples of things that go into a high value custom site. Um, so some of our clients at Pixel Palace include um, businesses like Women's Agenda, which is a large news site out of New South Wales. Um, we have done quite a few jobs for RSPCA over the years. Uh, we've got another one on the boil at the moment, and um, particularly their humane food division. Uh, we launched Travel Bootcamp this year, which was a really great custom site for a bunch of travel Instagrammer, blogger, influencers that run a really fantastically large um, event every year internationally to teach people how to make money from traveling. Um, and we've done quite a few travel sites, so big complex, um, African safari sites, we've done a couple, things like that. So lots of content, lots of pulling of stuff, multilingual, blah, blah, blah. So that's the sort of examples of work that we do. So what goes into a high value site? Um, well, obviously design and development. And I think most people think that that's what we do. And it is, I mean, that's the basics, right? The foundations, everyone does that. Um, but this is from our agency perspective, it's much more than that. So we include things like custom components is a big one in adding value. Um, I know speaking, some of the talks over the last few days have really talked about some of the more custom stuff that people are doing in WordPress. Um, so that's a massive value add and one of the bits I'm gonna dive into in a bit more detail and show some examples of the stuff that we've built. Um, it's UX and UI, so strategic design, um, and it's using our design experience combined with data and strategy to design a website that actually has goals in mind. Um, 
So it's strategic and it's not just pretty pictures. Training and handover, so management of the site afterwards, so the back end architecture, huge value in that and can be very time consuming in planning. Um, as well as customer service. So um, Pixel Palace, we're really big on the customer experience of clients working with us. Um, so that's another big value add. And then finally, strategy and planning, huge. A huge amount of time can go into strategy and planning on a high value site um, because there's often a lot to work with, like a marketing team at a business or just lots of content and um, lots of things to keep in mind um, to lay foundations for a successful project. So this stuff is just the ticket to the game stuff, right? Like every agency should be doing this. Most freelancers would be doing some of this, if not all of this as well. Um, it's a really good place to start, obviously. Um, but I'm gonna just look at this um, from a client perspective as well, because this is part of the thing about adding value and how you start getting up into higher value in the space of web. Um, so from a client perspective on a web project, they see all these same things. It's all the same things, but they have a different meaning to clients and a different level of importance. So like design, they see design as, you know, is this gonna make me look cool? Um, if I'm gonna speak value to clients in this space, I, they wanna know that this is gonna make them look awesome and their competitors are gonna go, wow, okay, that's really cool. Um, they're awesome. Will this make me look awesome? Dev, lots of clients, um, even big corporates don't understand dev. They don't understand the technical side of it. So their concern is, is this gonna work? I have no idea in this space. Is it gonna be fast? Is it gonna be good? Are they doing it the right way? I don't know. So value add there in terms of communicating that. Custom components. Can I have something unique? I've got this idea for really helping clients understand what we do or finding this information easily. Um, can I have something custom on my site that my competitors don't have? UX, UI for them is, will this convert? Am I gonna make more sales? Is it gonna work? Um, training and handover, can we manage this in-house? I'm investing all this money and the last website we had, we can't update anything without calling the web company. This is a massive concern and a huge value add if you can speak to the problem of the client in terms of, yes, you'll be able to manage this in-house as long as we invest the time in making sure that we've set the back end up properly for you. And lastly, the strategy. Um, making sure the investment's gonna be worth it. So being able to show that they're gonna get ROI on it because we've laid some foundations that are based on real facts and real data and real user information. But there's one other big value add, I think, that's often overlooked by agencies, but clients in particular, and that's this, giving a shit. Um, so the attention to detail in projects um, and having an in-depth understanding of the client and the business and the objectives and having the whole team across that and having the whole team invested in outcomes takes time and time equals money. This was a huge realization for me in the early days because I was in what many people probably in this room will recognize freelancer hell, which was I'm a massive people pleaser. I want everyone to think I'm awesome and I want to deliver at a high level and I was working on clients that didn't understand that and didn't value that and weren't paying enough for me to be able to spend the time or the energy that's involved in really giving a shit. And so that was a big problem. Um, and you need budget to be able to have time to care, is my point. And I think it's really important for clients to understand that too. It's a big part of our education with clients at Pixel Palace is that in terms of value, it's a hard thing to put a, a dollar price on, um, but it does add to the success of the project. It adds to how fun it is to work on the project throughout with the company that you're working on. Um, and you know, it really speaks to that value-based pricing. So the other bit of a high value site is this whole thing of custom versus template. And I think um, there's a real need for some education. I think it's getting better. I've seen some awesome stuff to, um, this weekend on some of the custom stuff. I know I loved um, Alex from Frame, all the stuff you're doing in ACF with you guys. So that's what we're doing too. And I think lots of people do, in the public or even in marketing don't understand what's possible in a custom WordPress. Um, this topic came from a, at the time when they put the call out for speakers for this and I was trying to think of a topic to submit, I had an interaction with uh, a new marketing manager at a potential new client that we were looking to work with. They're a big, uh, a nice boutique alcohol brand. Um, and we'd been in talks with them for about six months, working out the project. Um, this, someone in the C-suite had worked with us on another project at another company and was really, really impressed and really wanted us. 
Um, and the new marketing manager got hired internally at their end and came on board and she rang me on her second day and said, I don't, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna use you guys. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> well, great. It's been six months of talking to these people. Um, but okay, why? Um, because I don't want WordPress. It's like, okay, all right. So why don't you want WordPress? Because I don't want a template. I don't want, I don't, this has to look amazing. I don't want a template. I was like, oh my God. So we spent 40 minutes of me trying to educate her. She really didn't want to listen and we pulled the plug. I just went, I'm not working on this. If you literally can come into a company this size and not understand the difference between custom versus template and also what is possible, then we are not working together. Um, so done, finished. Um, so I think there's a huge amount of education. I thought this would be a good thing to talk on, um, especially because I know a lot of the WordCamp attendees are marketing people or maybe not high level devs that are working in big comp enterprise WordPress companies. Um, you know, you might be freelancers or you might be marketing or content or business owners and you might not realize that there's so much you can do in a custom WordPress, it's amazing. Um, so other, some of the other bits that are really cool about custom stuff is being able to strategically design. So we start with a blank Figma file on every job. We start from scratch, um, which lets us design something strategic. You know, great user experience, great user interface. Um, it can have the marketing message. We can do really creative stuff. We can think about mobile. We can think about user journeys and all that stuff. We're not jamming things into a preset thing. We can pretty much the world is our oyster. Um, the other bit of it is, you know, a custom build. There's nothing you don't need, super light, really. We don't pile in a heap of plugins trying to make stuff happen. You're not plugging in a theme that's got a whole heap of stuff that you don't need. Um, so, you know, more secure, like we've heard over the weekend, but also just faster. Um, another big value add in these bigger sites is the streamlined administration in a custom site. Um, again, the stuff that Alex was talking about with the ACF, um, that's hugely valuable. Most clients, when we deliver them one of these sites to them with that built into it, their mind's blown at what they can do with dragging stuff around and adding new rows and adding new pages with a page builder type functionality that they can't break um, in the look of their custom design that we designed for them. Um, that takes time and a lot of planning to get it well done and well executed and then execute. Um, but it's super, super valuable because the time spent by administration in-house at these big companies with marketing teams that might change over all the time, um, it's exponentially expensive if they can't use it um, properly and hand on that knowledge easily. And then the last bit is custom components. So this is one of the bits I'm going to dive into a bit and just show you some of the stuff that we have done over the last few years in our custom WordPress sites. Um, it's things like directories and listings, membership directories and paid membership directories, complex content management using taxonomies and custom post types and ACF, um, highly filterable content on the front end, complex gravity stuff, and then again, the customized admin and custom page builder functionality. So some examples. This, actually this site is really quite old. It's one of our really old ones, but I think it's a really great example of, of something that we built um, where the value is greater than the sum of the parts. Um, because this was a directory for RSPCA. Um, it's part of their choosewisely.org.au site, um, which is a listing of venues that you can make. Uh, you can search for a venue or a restaurant cafe if you want to go somewhere that has humane food choices. So it has humane eggs, pork, chicken, whatever. Um, so it's a geolocation directory. Um, which they had before, they had a clunky old one, but it worked, it was just a plug-in into a theme. Um, so we went back, custom designed the interface of that, but the biggest bit that I want to talk about today was the submission of a business listing. So we created a simple gravity form, it's nothing, it's nothing that crazy, where people can submit all of the details of the business venue. Um, and at the bottom, it's got questions about their food choices. So they can choose, you know, yes, we do the eggs. Yes, we don't do, we don't use humane chicken, but we do use humane pork. Submit, off it goes to RSPCA. What that does in the back end is create a draft listing in the directory. So it's actually creating a post in the custom post type with all of that stuff already formatted, ready to be published straight into the directory with no one touching anything. Um, and then RSPCA get the notification saying someone's supplied, the admin logs in, they go check the listing and just check that it's all legit. They might ring them, but more often than not, they can see from online that it's all okay. Um, and the biggest bit is the commitment section. So this bit down the bottom here where it asks the questions, in the back end, it lets RSPCA. The biggest problem they had in admin was that they time-consumingly had to research 
um, whether or not people ticked the right boxes and it was legit, um, and then manually set up the listing in the website. Now they can just see what they answer for those questions and tick the box either they're on the way or humane food all the way, which means they're completely compliant or they're only half compliant. Um, publish and it's straight into the directory. The ones that are humane food all the way get the highlighted listing because in the green and the other ones just are plain listings in order of geolocation closest to wherever you searched. So super simple, but added a huge amount of value to the RSPCA team um, in terms of admin. So it's pretty cool. Um, Another example was this site that we built uh, mid last year. It's massive content African safari site, multilingual in German and English, just to add to the complexity. Um, it basically features a lot of interactive and complex content management using taxonomies and custom post types um, and categories. So this site has um, sections for safaris, accommodation listings, countries, regions, training, adventures, and all of the content cross-pollinates in both languages across all different parts of the site. So you can pull in content from everywhere, um, basically using the um, categories and taxonomies and stuff. So it also features a really cool custom element. One of the custom elements is heap. There's too many to go into today, but this one was cool. So this is on the home page, and it's an interactive SVG map of Africa, um, where you can select the um, area of the region of Africa and get um, a quick link into some details about it. So in the back end, this is an ACF row, um, and you can just select, you turn on Namibia, so all the regions that are in that map are actually set up in the back end ready to go. So the client could just tick it live and fill in the, the top pick selections from a selector in the ACF. The rest is automated, publish, and it's straight live to the site. So again, sort of simple, I mean, it's not that simple, it's a bit of JavaScript and the SVG stuff, but it's a simple idea, um, but it's the strategy behind it and the forward thinking about how this might benefit the client and users for a long time to come. So this site also has a really cute little, it's just an example of a gravity form. Um, it's an interactive inquiry form. So again, nothing that crazy, but um, just use a slider and gravity forms, um, but it's a much more engaging way to capture inquiries for um, the business rather than just, you know, call to action, fill in our form. Um, so yeah, just little bits and pieces like that that are creative. Coffee beans. <laughs> for those who've seen me at WordCamp the last couple of times, it's not WordCamp unless I talk about coffee beans delivered. Um, this is my baby with my husband. Um, it's an e-commerce store that we started about four, nearly five years ago now, uh, over one weekend over a beer. Thought it was a good idea since we could build an e-commerce site that we should. <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, it's turned out okay, but it's now its own beast. It's its own company. It has five staff. My husband works it full time. We have an espresso bar, a distribution center, and it's probably one of the top online retail artisan coffee sites on in Australia. <laughs> um, so yeah, it went well, but yeah, yeah. I that's another story. But anyway, um, this is a great example of something custom as well. So on this site, um, we found that people were having trouble deciding uh, on what coffee they should buy. There's lots of choices and they weren't sure. So we came up with this idea for this interactive quiz, which is basically just using a gravity form, again, um, and some custom graphics and obviously some front end stuff. Um, but it lets people go through and select um, their preferences about what machine you use, stuff like that. Um, personality types is just a kind of cute one. Bring my answer. Gives you a little different thing every time you get this page. Um, and then it pops out basically um, a coffee personality. So they're all different depending on what you picked, um, which is shareable on social media and they're really, really funny. Um, but these are three products um, selected specifically like aligned to what you selected in that quiz. So it's real. Um, if you'd selected milk, then Il Caramello is a fantastic um, blend for you. And also you said you drank more than two, one or two a day, so you're probably going to need a kilo and you need whole beans because you said you had a grinder. So the product selection, simple, right? It's gravity forms, custom post type, WooCommerce, and a whole lot of really complex like matrix of if they select this, 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 this it lands here. Um, but nothing too crazy in terms of functionality. The value was in the thinking and the strategy on it. Um, and it was super valuable because we found that once we launched this, about it was about six months after we launched the site, we implemented this. And um, if people go through the quiz, their, their conversion rate was 200 times 
what it was without the quiz. Um, so it also, on an aside, because it's a gravity form, the data gets stored in the gravity form in the back end. So although this doesn't look like a form and you're not submitting anything, you actually are. So we have collected a great amount of really useful user data on our customers. If they're logged into the site, into the WooCommerce as well, it stores it against their customer record so we can see what machine they have and stuff like that if they've done the quiz. Um, so we use that data for marketing directly to them about um, spe things specific to them. So that's custom components. I could talk all day on custom components. Um, I actually really love it. It's one of the bits I love about what we do. Um, but the other big, big important bit here um, in terms of value is strategy. It's really scary jumping into something of high value and not feeling like there's a strategy. And I've seen that um, before we started doing strategic marketing, we'd often see big companies come to us and they need a website and they have budget and stuff, but you'd start digging and realize they actually had no plan for the web, no digital plan. They might have had a marketing plan, but no actual real plan. Um, so. Having a plan, a good marketing strategy, but also a plan for the website is absolutely crucial in making things work, small or big, but if you're investing this much money when you're up in this level of thing, then a plan is absolutely vital. So it's things like having a marketing plan and a brand strategy, you know, the obvious stuff, understanding your market um, and your target market and how to speak to them. Um, yeah, it's easy to assume that you, the clients know why they want a website, but really more often than not, don't, which is frightening. Um, the other bit is, you know, UX UI, taking the strategy and turning it into a really good design that works. So um, we also find here a really good value add is um, anything we can do to get the client really focused on the user at this point. So that's things like user goals and journey mapping, content canvases aligned with their business goals and all that sort of stuff um, is part of what we wrap into a package on a higher value site like that because we don't want to work on anything that's not going to work. Um, it doesn't feel good. Um, Architecture is the other thing. So along with planning, it's about looking at audience research. So looking at real data, if they've got an existing site, we'll look at, you know, how's that performing? What are the top pages? Where are people going? Where are they dropping off? All that sort of stuff um, and use that to plan the new one. Um, it's really great to show that to clients because it adds massive value when you're starting to talk about real data and not just abstract assumptions on things. Um, then also it's about considering how WordPress is going to handle the project. So we do spend a lot of time in, this is pre-build, pre-design, pre-content, pre-final content a lot of the times, a lot of time planning and the structure and laying the groundwork and foundations for things like the custom post types and taxonomies and how things are going to feed into, how things are going to pull across all different parts of the site. Um, and also the back-end architecture. How are we going to build this so people can manage it? Um, what's going to be the best way to future-proof it for them so that they get a really good, clear run at this themselves without having to come back and get help? So the other big piece here is understanding value and selling on value. Um, it's a tough one in this space because you do get people that just go, I want to know how long it's going to take you and I only want to pay you that. Um, and that's not right. That's not right. There's so much, this, this is such a complex part of this whole thing. Um, and I'm really fascinated by it, actually. There's a few things that go into this, though, that make this whole thing more than a website. Relationships matter. When you're embarking on a massive high value site like this, it's a bit of time. And in a team our size, like when we were three people and we were doing sites this size, it's a massive investment. We are all in. The whole team is all in and all over this whole thing. So the relationship with the client is so important to having it work and feel good and maintain the momentum and the feel good about it. And anyone in an agency will know how quickly, or even freelancers, everyone that works with clients will know how quickly a client's attitude or their communication style or the relationship can just put a big downer on the whole thing and make you not want to work on it anymore. Um, I have this analogy that everyone laughs at, but I think it's a good one, that embarking on a decent-sized web project with an agency is like choosing a baby daddy, because basically you're, you're choosing to have a child together that you're going to raise for some amount of time together, whether it's just getting that thing born, or if it's raising it to go off to college and be successful and make lots of money and support you into your old age. And I think you need to choose it carefully, like choosing based on whether you feel a synergy with this thing and you trust the agency and you trust the people and in vice versa, I'm so picky about the clients we work with because I have a small team to protect the energy of and I want it to always, I want Mondays to feel great at Pixel Palace. So um, the relationship matters. Um, communication 
major factor why a lot of projects fail. Um, and I think, again, that feeds back into the relationships, but it adds to value. If an agency communicates really well, um, that is valuable and something that probably doesn't get talked about enough in terms of shopping around and trying to shop on price. Um, price won't matter when you're not getting an answer <laughs> from people or you feel like you're just not getting what you need. It's the worst. Um, systems and processes. So you need systems and processes if you're working on big sites so that things stay on track and on budget and avoid scope creep. Um, things will fall over if you don't have processes in place. Having processes and systems takes time and budget and experience. So again, it's adding to the value. Price versus cost. <sighs> yeah, so this is, this is a great one because people shop on price on websites for some crazy reason. I just I, I can't, I, I don't know, I, I don't understand. Um, it's kind of like shopping on price on a car. I get it if all you can afford is a $500 car because that's all you can afford and you need a car. And I think fit for purpose and all that stuff. But what you buy for $500 is not what you buy for $10,000 or $50,000. And the people understand that in that analogy, but they don't seem to understand it in web. Um, so it's about taking a client from a low expectation of budget because they don't understand all this stuff that I'm talking about and moving them through that education to understand that sometimes the cost of a website is invisible. Like sometimes you can't tell how much this thing's costing you in lost opportunity or time wasted or not converting um, and you know paying a couple of grand to get it designed and built is nothing compared to what you're losing from not having done all this other stuff in the background. So um, it's a tough one. And then charging for value rather than time. So you know, if you employ an agency like Pixel Palace or some of the other sort of agencies in the space, you're employing experience and speed and expertise and you're, you're, you're buying on outcomes. You're not buying on, it's gonna take us 40 hours to do that. Um, you know, it's, our experiences come from years and years and years of doing this stuff over and over and seeing it all. So we can be quick and awesome and we know how to quickly jump in and do something and we have things in place to be able to roll stuff out really quickly. That's valuable. It's that thing of, you know, you go to the dentist and he tells you it's going to be $500 to pull that tooth out and it's hurting you. You, you don't argue with him and say, it's only going to take you 10 seconds to pull that tooth out. I'm only going to pay you for the 10 seconds. No, you're paying for the whole thing. It's like value-based um, value based rather than time based. And then just coming back to the thing of giving a shit is valuable. Giving a shit is valuable. That's the bit for me and I think it's just so intangible but it's it. Getting a team uh, or a freelancer who cares is worth paying for. And if you think it's expensive to hire a professional, wait until you hire an amateur. Now, it's so tough in this space because I do believe if you pay peanuts, you generally get monkeys. You might luck it out and get something really awesome, and, but that poor developer or freelancer is probably dying. Um, conversely, um, I'm all about not selling to clients who shouldn't spend big money for something. Um, I'm definitely a massive fit for purpose is my thing. I'm all about fit for purpose. So there's a range of options out there in this space. You can get a site for $500 you can get a site for $100,000. They're both websites. Um, and everything is okay. The lower end of things is okay too. If that's what you can afford and that's all you can do, then that's okay. But it's about understanding that what you get for that is less experience, less care, less time, less speed, less technically sound. That's okay as long as you're aware. Um, it's like the car thing. If you can only afford the $500 car, you know you're not getting something terribly safe or long lasting, but you're okay because you understand. Um, we've probably all seen examples of this, like the client that spent $800 on a website and then is immediately redoing it again because they realised that was just so stupid and it doesn't even work properly and they may as well have gone to the pub with that $800. Um, and they want to at that point. Um, or clients who cut out the two interesting bits of functionality that we propose on a website to make it different and actually convert for them at, because of budget, but then they just have like a boring ass site that they could have just had a template and you know, they look like everyone else, and um, they had a chance to really get ahead. Um, or clients, conversely, who pay too much. We had one client come to us a couple of years ago that had spent $40,000 on a Envato template. And yeah, and so that terrifies me, and it's just awful. So it's about fit for purpose. So basically, that's kind of it. The takeaways from today that I would like you to take from my talk, if anything. There's five things. One, there needs to be a plan. I think there needs to be a plan regardless of budget, but 
the more time, the more budget you have, the more time you have, the better plan you can have. Um, WordPress can be greater than the sum of its parts. I'm yet to see something we can't do with a custom WordPress. Like, you can do some cool shit. Um, so uh, I love WordPress for that. Um, and if anyone tries to tell me otherwise, next. Um, the architecture of the admin and the back end adds a huge amount of value, and this is something people don't talk about enough, but it really should be. If you're a marketing manager and you're getting quotes on websites, like talking about what, how the back end architecture is going to be set up is um, really, really important. Relationships matter. Relationships for me and communication is the biggest thing in my business. It's the reason why Pixel Palace always has done well because I'm a communicator. I'm a people person. I might not be the best designer. I'm definitely not a developer. Um, but I understand people and I know how to communicate well. So I manage relationships well and that is of massive... I think you could talk to anyone that Pixel Palace has worked with in the last 10 years and that would be the number one thing they say at the end of a project. At the beginning, I was scared of spending the money. This was You were three times more expensive than some of the other quotes I got, or ten times more expensive. But, oh, my God, in a heartbeat, do it again. I wish I, I, wish I knew that at the beginning. And, so, and I have this thing, too. I'm always like, if you knew what I know, you'd be fine with it. You'd be like, shut up and take my money. So relationships and communication is everything in that space. And then value is not all about the time it takes, like the dentist. Um, so that's a really important thing, uh, I think, for everyone, freelancers, as well as um, potential clients, or if you're in the market for a website, understanding that the value is not about the time it takes. Um, that's it. We've got time for questions. Thank you. How quick was I? Yeah, we got a time for... Uh, we've got time for a few questions, I believe. Um, so if you could come down the front, we will have some microphones. And um, yeah, thanks again, Jen. That was an awesome talk. No worries. Thank you so much. I love I love the slides. They're oh, awesome in your stories. Awesome. You. Um, you talk about communicating value to your clients. What's the best way to do that? So do you tell them horror stories about that forty thousand dollar website that built helps. on a template or data? How do you communicate the value yeah, that you bring? I think um, onboarding of client, like the initial first few conversations with clients, are super important. Mm -hmm. And I think also in that space. Um, the energy that you come at, like, again, I'm, I'm naturally really good with people. So I naturally do this thing where you can see I'm being authentic yeah. when I talk to you about what we do and what the value is in that. And I believe that so people feel it. Um, I think it's really hard to have that conversation if you don't believe the value yourself. Um, so that's probably one thing is really getting clear within yourself if you're having these conversations with people like that you value it and that you're not going, oh, it's not really worth it. Because the minute you feel like that, then they're going to feel that too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's, it depends on the situation. It depends on the client. Sometimes it's great to say, if they've got a really low budget expectation because someone else has quoted, you know, 10 grand and we're saying this is 40 and literally, genuinely, if we're saying it's that, then I'm telling you that it needs to be that. Like mm -hmm. this isn't... So I think... Yeah, I think it's the two things. I think it's confidently believing that it's worth that and understanding the value and then working out a way to clearly communicate that in the right... Every client has a different um, fear, I guess, that early bit. Yeah. Yeah, so um, understanding their problem and trying to help them solve it. Awesome. Um, this okay. is probably... Yeah. Great. I think that was it. Uh, thank you. It was a great, great nice. talk. Um, for these feature-rich sites, um, who owns the IP uh, of those features, you or the client? Um, I, they, t they own what we did for them. Um, that's not to say that we can't go and build something with a similar setup for someone else. Um, we never, ever have copied exactly from one to another mm -hmm. um, because all of our sites are custom, like in any way. Anyway. If you look through our portfolio, you see they're all completely different. There's not one that looks like, oh, yeah, they've kind of gone, oh, yeah, that's the same thing. 
totally different. Um, so, yeah, I mean, th mm -hmm. those cl clients own their thing. Yeah. They can do what they want with that. Yeah. Um, there's no restriction on us as far as I'm aware or concerned that we can't go and mm -hmm. do the same sort of build because they're all iterations of the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then follow, follow on question from that. If someone wanted, uh, you know, another agency wanted to come along and say, oh, that choose wisely yep. functionality, love it, can I buy it? Do you, you, you could, do you sell there's it? Nothing, well, there's nothing in that. So that's the beauty of that, right? And like, it's literally a gravity form and a custom post type that creates the draft post. We didn't write that. That's like, so I think there's a part of this too that's like we, um, some of that functionality is built using premium plugins. Um, we try not to use plugins um, unnecessarily, but some of that big, the heavy lifting is done mm -hmm. by things like, um, well, ACF obviously, but um, GMI WordPress and Facet WP and those sort of things, like there's no need to reinvent the wheel on it. So all of that stuff is basically strategic use of plugins together and some of the native WordPress stuff like custom post types and taxonomies and things mm -hmm. like that. It's, there's nothing proprietary in it. We haven't done anything that we did that we couldn't do with a plugin almost yeah. and some clever stuff. So, sure. so okay. yeah. Um, and there's a different question. Um, communicating with your clients, uh, do you just do that over email and phone or do you insist on a certain way to yeah, interact? Yeah, that's a good one. Um, email's horrible. I think things go pear-shaped on email so damn quickly, it's not funny. Um, so I think a lot of clients are happy to rage on an email as well, but they don't tend to rage when you pick up the phone. And I feel like a lot of creatives in particular are really scared of that phone call. But I mentor a lot of other designers and sort of startups in the creative thing, and I am always say to them, get comfy with these conversations. Get comfy with uncomfortable conversations. Because what I've found over 10 years of doing this is that clients love me because I have boundaries and I say, no, that's a really great idea, but no, we're not doing that because it's out of scope and it'll take us another three days to do. And But we can do it. I can quote on it, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But that's a phone call, not an email. They get an email on that and they're like pissed off. Mm. Um, so I am definitely a phone call girl or a meeting. Um, we have found to presenting designs the first time to clients, in particular where there's multiple stakeholders in person or at least on a Zoom, so I can watch them because I watch their face and I know and I can, I, I've got a spidey sense that my team will tell you it's hilarious, I'll predict. <laughs> I can tell you what their feedback's going to be before they send it. Mm -hmm. And every time it's like, oh, yeah. So yeah, but being there and mm -hmm. presenting in person lets you talk them through the stuff. It's so easy to make assumptions that people know everything that we know. Um, and you know, you've been working on a design, a complex design for a big corporate site for ages, and you just send that off to them. And we've got all these assumptions because we've been looking at it. Yeah, like that's going to be sticky. So when they scroll, it's going to stay there. And then you send them the thing and you send some notes. They don't read that. They just look at the things and they're like, why well, is there a big blah, 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 blah. And then they're upset already. Whereas mm -hmm. you go and present that, you talk them through this awesome thing and they're like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. So again, it's the giving a shit part. Mm -hmm. It's that bit of, yes, it's easier to fire off a PDF or send them a link to the Figma to comment on or whatever it is that you do as your process. But there's huge value in stopping and taking time to actually cuddle them and say, let's talk this through. I want to show you my enthusiasm and what we thought and the thinking behind it and that we had strategy and this is why we did this and imagine when it does this. And you get sign off first pop. We get sign off first pop on most things that we send, big mm -hmm. things, because we go and do that. So. Great. All right. Thank you for your answers. No worries. Thank you. Thanks again, Jen. That's right. um, that was a uh, great talk. No uh, I'm sure we're all going to uh, ask everyone to uh, the person next to you to give you fifty thousand dollars to build them a website. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be worth it. It's got to be worth it. Is there another no. question? Yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> Are we done? <laughs> Um, yeah, I was just wondering how far do you get through scoping before you give the quote of this will be $50,000? Yeah, yeah. So these big sites definitely often have a paid scoping. Um, so we'll do a workshop where we, if they can't give us a very detailed brief, um, so one big one that we're working on currently, um, the marketing girl at that place is amazing and detailed and has the most amazing, like, everything done, brief, amazing content, done, all ready to go. Very easy for us to just go bang, that's how much that is. But more often than not, these big corporates in particular have no idea. So we say, we'll go in and spend a day or two days or whatever it is working with your marketing team or working whoever it is their thing to come up with 
the plan and from that plan they'll come out of it with an architecture for the site perhaps and a content like here's the, the pages and the architecture here's a content canvas that you can go and start thinking about content on do you need help with content do you need a marketing plan do you need you know so from that if they if they have no idea and we can't see clearly what the scope is because we do fixed price we're not doing um, you know it's it's this is the cost of this site to this scope if we can't see that clearly then I won't provide a, a quote and they have to do that otherwise we're out yeah cool sweet well thanks again Jen thanks Karen. Um, yeah thanks for your talk and for your awesome well-colored slides thanks <laughs>